Hi, I'm Martha. Welcome to Essential Somatics. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips that can help you get the most out of three very important somatic movements, arch and flatten, the back lift, and the side bend. Somatic movements address accumulated muscle tension that develops in response to stress. And this occurs at the level of your nervous system. We call that sensory motor amnesia because your brain, the command center of your muscles, literally forgets how to sense and move these muscles efficiently and easily. Now these movements reduce muscle tension in the back, front, and sides of your body so that you can extend and flex, side bend, and rotate, all with ease, but always be able to find a sense of neutral a stable, balanced center through your legs, nice and tall through your skeleton. Yet for some people, these simple movement patterns just don't feel as comfortable as they should. So why is that? Well, sensory motor amnesia is just that. You can't feel what you can't feel, so you can't move as accurately as you think you can. For instance, you may be stuck a little bit in a trauma reflex, a little tighter on one side, slightly twisted maybe because of an accident. And so you find that arch and flatten, the back lift and the side bend really, really highlight where it is that you can't sense nor control your muscles. So here are a few tips to help you get the most out of these very important movements. Arch and flatten is a simple and gentle arch of the back, both sides contracting as the front lets go and lengthens, and a slow release of these muscles back to neutral. Now the rolling of your pelvis forward should send your pelvis right down the center. However, if you're stuck in a trauma reflex, a little bit tighter on one side than the other, well you're going to find that you're going to be arching and flattening a little bit off center, a little bit more into one hip. So you're really getting quite good at arching and flattening off center. So I'm going to show you what to do. So when you inhale and arch, ideally you want to be going right down the center of your pelvis and then melting all the way back down to neutral. It's important for your brain to know where neutral is, but if you're stuck a little bit in the trauma reflex, as you inhale and arch, you might find that your brain is taking you off center to one side or the other, a little bit more into one side of the pelvis than the other. And so let's do something called recalibrating the pelvis. Let's exaggerate first what it is that you're doing. So go ahead and inhale and arch, and arch up onto that sit bone, onto that side of the pelvis, and exhale and melt. And let's do that again. Inhale and arch, tipping into that side of the pelvis. Stop at the top of your range, press your opposite shoulder down. You're doing a diagonal arch and then exhale and melt yourself back down. One more time. Go ahead and gently inhale and arch, tipping into that side, pressing the opposite shoulder down. Noticing the arch in the opposite side of the back and melt yourself back down to neutral. Okay, now let's go into the other side. Go ahead and inhale and arch. Tip into the opposite side of your pelvis onto that opposite sit bone and exhale and melt. Releasing your back. And again, inhale and arch. Stop at the top of your range and press your opposite shoulder down. You might have to think about this. It's not your brain's habit. And slowly melt. And one last time. Inhale and arch. Softening the belly, contracting the back, and slowly melt back through that diagonal to neutral. Okay. So you've gone into the side that your brain habitually goes into. You've gone into the other side. And now let's see if you can recalibrate right down the center. Go ahead and inhale and arch, keeping both sides of your waist long. 
belly is soft, front is open, and slow motion melt right down your spine like a string of pearls. Let everything go. Have you succeeded in recalibrating your pelvis? A common complaint for people doing the back lift is, oh, this really hurts me right here in my SI joint, or it hurts me right here in the center of my sacrum. Well, usually that's because, let's go back to the trauma reflex, one side of your waist is slightly tighter than the other, so instead of your pelvis being flush on the mat, the pelvis is a little bit rotated as you lift your leg, so you're overusing one side of your back muscles instead of using the diagonal muscles of your body, of the back of your body. You'll need to learn how to recalibrate your pelvis, and I'll show you how. Now another challenge people have is that they can't let go of the front of their body as they lift up to contract and pendiculate the back of their body. They're a little stuck in the red light reflex of slumping. And this can cause a lot of discomfort in your neck. So the front and the back are supposed to coordinate together. So I'll show you how to do that. So whether you're doing the modified back lift, keeping the hand on the elbow on the floor, or doing the classic back lift, as you inhale and float your elbow, head, hand, and opposite leg up, you should feel the back muscles contracting gently as the front releases, and then the back muscles melt as you come back to the mat. But if your brain has habituated a trauma reflex, as you inhale and lift up, it's going to twist you a little bit more into one side of the pelvis than the other, and that's not going to be very comfortable. So I'm going to teach you how to recalibrate your pelvis. Take your fingertips and put them in the front of your pelvis, what I like to call the tips of the hips. And now, go ahead and rock into the side of your pelvis that your brain was taking you into automatically. And then slowly melt through neutral. Now let's go the other way. Rock to the other side and melt through the center. Your fingertips are here as a guide. As you rock into the other side, you'll feel a lifting of the pelvis. And as you put pressure into the other side of your pelvis, you'll feel the opposite side lift. And now come on back to neutral. You can take your fingertips away. And now keeping the non-working leg gently planted and that non-working side of the pelvis gently planted, go ahead and inhale and float on up. Notice your back muscles contracting. Slowly melt back down. Let everything go. Was that easier once you learned to recalibrate your pelvis? So let's move on to another thing that people do when uh, they do the back lift. They have sensory motor amnesia in the front of their body, and they're a little bit tighter than they realize. And they don't let go of their belly. So when they come on up, they don't get very far, and they try to use their neck and their shoulder in place of their back muscles. So here's something you can do. Whichever way your head is turned to, focus on that side shoulder and the opposite hip. Take a nice breath in, and as you exhale, roll that shoulder and the opposite hip forward into the mat. Go into that contraction. Tighten the front of your body. Now slowly soften, allowing the ribs and the pubic bone to melt away from each other, and then take a nice breath in and make space through the shoulder and the front of the hip as you float up and melt yourself back down. That's called doing more of what your brain is already doing. Let's do that one more time. 
Nice breath in. As you exhale, contract through the front, the shoulder and the hip come closer towards each other. The belly is tight. Slowly melt, lengthening the space between your shoulder and your hip. And slowly melt back to neutral and let everything go. Now lastly, the side bend. A lot of people don't realize that when they're doing the side bend, they're actually not really using their waist muscles. They're moving from the center. You're supposed to be moving from the center, but they're not really. And instead, they're really using their leg to try to get movement in the center. And this can cause discomfort in the groin and sometimes in the SI joint. So this movement is centered in the waist and the side of the trunk. And all you're doing is learning how to contract one side as the other side releases. And you need this for smooth walking. So some people think that they're bending to the side when actually they're arching their back, maybe they're twisting, and they might even be falling forward into the center. So the waist muscles are a little bit tricky to feel, so don't despair. I'll show you what to do. So put your fingers in your waist, between your ribs and your hip. And ideally, as you exhale and float your foot up, you should feel a contraction at your waist as your hip slides up towards your armpit. But for those who use a lot of effort with their leg and they don't move the center of their body, here's what it looks like. And, and you're working very hard in the groin and you might feel it down your leg. So here's what you can do. Put your hand on the outside of your hip. And as you exhale, imagining that your foot is the weight of a feather, invite your hip to slide up towards your armpit and then slowly guide it back down. Do that one more time. Nice breath in. And as you exhale, your hip slides up towards your armpit as your foot follows along. And as you sl slide your hip back down, you can guide it with your own hand. So let's go on to the second tip. A lot of people, when they do the side bend, they think they're using their waist muscles, but indeed what they're doing, especially if they do the classic side bend variation, is they're either rolling forward, twisting back, or maybe even arching their back. Now, you'll feel this in the SI joint, and you might even feel it in your groin, and it's not comfortable. So what I like to do is I put my arm up over my head in line with my eyebrow. Go ahead and take a nice breath in, and as you exhale, sweep your arm up and over past your hip toward the bottom of the mat. This is really going to help you feel the side of your body right here, not here, not here, right down the side and slowly come on back up. And again, nice breath in. And as you exhale, sweep your arm up and over, let your hip glide towards your armpit, making an accordion out of your waist muscles and then slowly float the arm up and over, release the waist and the hip, and let everything go. So I hope you've enjoyed these tips for getting the most out of arch and flatten, the back lift, and the side bend. I hope they help you enjoy your somatic movement practice so that you can move freely with mastery and joy. Thanks for joining me.